Hi, welcome to TV Cat Tech. Today I'm looking at this. This is the Anker i41EJ HD pan tilt camera. I'm going to look at the uh, pros and cons and um, I'm going to show you some footage and we're going to go th have a take, take a quick look at the uh, software, so the actual app on your phone. And um, yeah, I mean, that's basically about it. Just going to review the thing. If you want to know where each of these bits is coming, then take a look in the description because I'll kind of time code it all because I know not everybody wants to see everything when it comes to these kind of videos. This was provided to me free of charge by Anchor for review. So let's get on with a massive sales pitch that's absolutely no use to anyone whatsoever. No, seriously, I am actually going to review this, which means listing good and bad points. And there are some bad points about this camera, but it's not all bad. So let's get started. It won't take too long on this because uh, these are fairly standard products these days, quite uh, common products. Get. All right, so we've got our uh, quick start guide there. And we have mounting screws and roll plugs. Very good. Uh, it's powered by uh, USB, this. It's a five volt supply and uh, comes together with a fairly, by the look of things, quite a lengthy uh, USB cable there. So, micro USB cable for the camera. It also comes together with a LAN cable. A uh, flat LAN cable like that, which you may need to use when first setting it up. Not always, but uh, sometimes you might need to connect it via LAN for that initial setup, you know, while you get your wireless network. Depends on how your network is configured and stuff. Uh, and we've got our mounting bracket here. So this looks like a fairly standard issue uh, product. So there's our uh, USB power supply. So it comes with a USB power supply, which is good. It's all very white, isn't it? And it comes with our mounting bracket, which I've just pulled the, this bit off. Yeah, so it comes with a bracket here to allow this uh, to mount. You can mount that on the wall and then sit the camera on top of there. And then we have the camera itself, which I guess is the most interesting part. Let's move that to one side and let's take a look at uh, the camera itself. It's Pan tilt camera, so no no zoom on this. Apart from uh, you'll be able to uh, pinch on the app, I imagine. So pinch the screen, and that will allow you to zoom in. And uh, because it is HD, that you know you'll retain a certain amount of quality when you do that. So uh, that does allow a degree of zoom, if you like, digital zoom. So there's a the camera, quite nice, quite tidy, isn't it? Neat, uh, neat camera. But uh, again, standard issue, fairly standard stuff. You got uh, space here for a. Uh, SD card, a micro SD card, you've got a reset button there, USB, and uh, there's the uh, LAN connector, and this will just pan, like, you know, like this, left and right, and it will tilt up and down, and that will be controllable from the app. So there we go, that's what's in the box. Now let's take a look quickly at setting this up. All right, so this is the app that you need to use uh, when installing this camera. This is called My Anchor, and you can get this on the, the uh, on Google Play or uh, or on the App Store, on the Apple App Store. And uh, it, it doesn't inspire confidence because this icon here, I don't know whether you'll be able to see this terribly clearly, but um, let me just brighten up my screen there. You can probably see that that icon is like kind of really, it's like a, a really compressed JPEG. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna just show you something quickly because I took a look at the ratings on this app and oddly it gets five star ratings right across the board. And if you look at the actual information, if I just go to the ratings and just do see all, they're all five stars, but they're all very, very specific in, their, in the technical information that they provide. And not only that, they're all by very, very specifically named people. Shera Shoya, Miyoshia Lanceter, Tomika Kaudi, uh, Price Pill... Are they real names? Because most people, when they have a, a, an account on... You know, if I had an account here, it would probably say TD Cat or TD Cat Tech or something. It wouldn't just say, you know, my full name on there. And I've just looked at other apps and they are nothing like this, but... but the, uh, the information they give is <laughs> easy and quick to install. The picture is sharp and beautiful, so you don't have to worry about losing things. 
Okay, uh, so th I think, and I'm only being skeptical here because I have no idea. I, I think all these reviews are possibly fake, or quite a few of them are anyway. Anyway, let's get the app installed and see what it does, see whether it's uh, pretty straightforward to set up or not. I'm gonna have to get some power too, aren't I? All right, so when you install the, uh, the An My Anchor app, the first thing you get prompted with after you've uh, entered to signed up and put a username and password in is uh, add a device. So I'm gonna uh, add a device now, click on plus, and uh, this is a uh, PTZ camera here. So I'm gonna tap one of those. We'd like to access the camera. That's fine, and it's gonna just, I'm just gonna scan the QR code on the bottom of the camera here, which is done and has now come up with my camera ID. So I'm gonna add that, add that camera now, and I'm gonna uh, add it via Wi-Fi. Okay, so I'll hear the sound of a water drop, which has already happened, so next on that. And I haven't heard the voice prompt, so I'm just gonna press reset on the camera until I hear the voice prompt to tell me that it's ready to... Uh... Waiting for receiving the wireless config information. Yeah, that. So now I've already heard the voice. So now I've got to enter my... Oh, camera doesn't support five gig, by the way. It doesn't support five gig Wi-Fi. That's not a big problem. So now I've just got to enter my SSID and password and try and connect. So now it starts its uh, negotiation with the camera, sending that information. I struggled a little bit to connect it. It was saying that it wasn't connecting to my Wi-Fi, so it wasn't passing the information across over the kind of tones. I connected it to Ethernet and uh, it didn't do it then. I went onto my router to check that it wasn't de denying it for any reason. Uh, but then it said there was an upgrade to do. So I did the upgrade and it restarted. And when it restarted, I went into the settings via Ethernet and it says it is connected to my Wi-Fi. So I've just disconnected the Wi-Fi now and I've reset the camera. Uh, so I'm gonna just check now whether or not it's gonna let me into it. Yeah, so we're now, we are now definitely connected via Wi-Fi. There's my, uh, there's my camera there. And yeah, that's all good. So that is working at uh, 1080p. And uh, no problems at all there. So it has connected, but I wouldn't say that the process was extremely, it, it kind of looks like it should be really user-friendly, but it wasn't that user-friendly, um, not for me at least. I think one of the things that sometimes lets cameras down from, shall we say, less well-known manufacturers is the software. And uh, the software for this app isn't, uh, for this camera isn't exactly perfect, but it is much better than other cameras I've seen. Uh, it is in fact identical to certain other cameras. It seems that uh, there are a group of cameras, a group of manufacturers that just use the same software. So presumably because it's the same kind of, you know, same chipset or something inside the camera. All right, so here I am in the iPhone and I'm gonna be honest here, I've tried to record this a number of times now and I've had a couple of problems whereby the device just suddenly goes offline, the app has stopped responding properly, and it's kind of, this is my last attempt, okay? So if this, if this doesn't work, I'm just gonna, gonna give it, I'm just gonna have to scrap giving you a demonstration of the app because it's just not working correctly. So let's give it one more shot and see what happens. So at the bottom right hand side here, you can see that I've got the my Anchor app. That's the one you've got to download for this camera, though it is similar to uh, this one here, uh, which is one I've got for another camera. They're basically identical software. So let's go into the my Anchor app and it's all swiveling all over the place. So it says at the moment, the device is offline in the device list. If you want to add other devices, you can do that here. You can just click on the plus button, go into the device selection, and you can control multiple devices from the app at the same time, which is good. So let's go into the kitchen and hopefully get our image up. Yes, we do, thankfully. Okay, now let's rotate it. I wanna rotate this because I wanna show you the um, full image. I'm kind of using a different sc a screen capture. I don't wanna screen cap on the phone before anyone says you can screen cap on the phone. I know I can do that, but I'm not doing it for a reason. But here we go. So here we have our nice streaming HD image, 184K per second. That's kind of what you'd expect for this sort of image. The only thing I would say is that it's not particularly late at the moment. Uh, it is still light outside. 
uh, you can see from the light coming in here, the reflection on the window. And yet this is very much already in night mode. And there's quite a bit of grain in that image. If I can zoom in on this image here, this is zooming in on the app itself. There's quite a lot of noise on that image already. And this isn't even nighttime. So the sensitivity of the camera does concern me a little bit. It's just is it's just a pretty noisy camera. Uh, so if I click on here and if I tap on the screen now, we have the options down the bottom to record video, to record uh, a snapshot, and then we have the option to talk to somebody, uh, to actually use the microphone to uh, speak to somebody through your phone and out through the camera. Then there's the option here with the speaker to listen to audio from the room that's being recorded, which is great. And uh, then down the bottom right-hand side, we have a few settings which we can get into just to control the brightness, contrast, saturation, and sharpness of the camera and force it on either day or night or auto mode. So I'm going to try changing this to day mode now and see what it does, uh, see whether I can actually push it onto day mode and see whether or not it can cope with it. All right, so if I close that now, yeah, there we go. See, the threshold between night and day seems a bit off because well, the colours aren't amazing on that, but it's still a decent image. It shows you how much light there is in the room and how, how much it is still totally daytime. So I'm not sure auto is the best option here in this case because if I go to auto again, bang, it's straight to uh, the night view, which I'd prefer the, that colour view, actually, I think. And let's go into the main settings for the camera. So we have information about the camera. You can change the nickname of the camera. So in this case, I've got it set to uh, kitchen. Date and time, you can sync that from your uh, device, which is good. And then if we go into the system menu here, it just allows, it to, allows you to uh, restart the device, restore it to factory settings, or update the firmware. Then you've got your admin password, and you can also set a guest password, which is good. Uh, the alarm settings, so this is where you kind of enable or disable motion detection on the device. And then you have also a record function whereby you can either have continuous recording on, or you can record based on motion detection. So if I go into continuous recording, this is currently set to enable recording and we have a recording schedule. So you can say, I only want to record from, you know, you can add a schedule, whatever schedule you like, I suppose, to um, to record only certain times a day. So maybe you only want it recording in the evening when somebody's not there or in the daytime when someone's not there or whatever. That's That works pretty well. And then we have the option for three recording modes, if I bring this up to the top. So they kind of have an odd naming convention. You've got this first one, normal recording mode, where they say four days on a 32 gig card. Uh, superior recording mode, which is what I'm using at the moment, or advanced recording mode up to 15 days. These are kind of reversed as far as, I, as, far as I'm concerned, because what these are actually doing really is just reducing bit rate and reducing frame rate of the recording. So in advanced recording mode, the frame rate's much, much lower, and the bit rate is considerably lower. And that's how you get more time out of it. It's a simple, you know, simple solution. But so normal recording mode is actually the best recording mode, by far better quality. And if I go back to the main section here, uh, you have the SD card area where it just tells you the status and the capacity of how much you've used at the moment. And you can also connect a recording device. So this would be for a, um, a recording box that's connected directly to your uh, network. I'm not absolutely sure about this bit, to be honest. I've never set any one of these up, so I'm not going to talk any more about that. Cloud storage here, you should be able to set up. Network settings tells you, you know, tells you whether you're connected on Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and all your IP address and all that sort of stuff. On-screen display, you can edit that too. So kitchen, you can tell it what format, how you want the date to show and whether you want to show the day. And then what's in the more section? Oh yeah, you can uh, flip the screen. Nice little additional feature. If, you have, if you're putting the camera upside down for some reason, you can flip the screen. And then you've got your volume settings for speaker and the sensitivity of the mic. And a prompt tone when booted up, it sort of does a little splashing sound when it starts up, which I've turned off because it's just unnecessary, really. And then the setting for whether you're in a 50 hertz region or a 60 hertz region to avoid light flicker. 
And finally, down the bottom, we have the motion detection settings. Now, one of the things uh, in the con section of this camera, the you know the bad points about it, is the fact that motion detection is difficult to set up. In fact, it's not even letting me set it up at all right now. But um, I find that no matter what I set the things to, they're not they're not exactly as I would want them to be. So motion detection doesn't work great. This works better, in my opinion, as a continuous recording camera because motion detection i wouldn't trust it to reliably record something when it happened okay so now comes to the fun bit the pros and cons and i've got these written down so i don't forget them the first pro is undoubtedly the value this thing is not expensive it's a cheap way to get into monitoring your home having some kind of security in place so you know it's a good starting point if you still get into the kind of Nest Cam or you know Google cameras, whatever they're called now, um, if you get into that sort of area, you'll be paying considerably more money for similar devices. Better quality, maybe. Better software, definitely. But these still do a job. So if you want to get into this and have a go, see whether it's a camera or something you want to use, then great value. The image quality in the daytime is pretty good. Uh, from the from the shots I put up, up at the start of the video, there you might have seen that the nighttime and daytime quality vary dramatically, and that's something I'll get onto in the con section as well. But um, the daytime image quality is really good. It's clear. It's sharp. You know, if you zoom in on certain stuff, you can. I was I had something I was looking at in that shot in the kitchen there, which is where I've kind of been testing this camera primarily. Uh, I was looking at a document just on our kind of breakfast bar area there and I zoomed into it and I could read the text on it. You know, it's not bad at all, really. It's only 1080p, this, remember, and I still managed to get in pretty close and read what I wanted to read. Not that you'd necessarily want to do that with a security camera, but you know what I mean. Okay, uh, records to micro SD. I suppose that's fairly standard, but it is still good because it means that uh, you don't have to use cloud storage if you don't want to. You can just record your footage to micro SD. Of course, if the camera goes or the camera gets damaged, that might get damaged with it or will get taken with it, but it's still an option if you don't choose to use cloud storage. Um, it's got a good range of movement, this camera. I like I like, um, I like like how much, you know, there, if there it is in its fairly central position and uh, it goes Wow, bloody hell, it goes all the way around. It goes literally like 360 degrees in that uh, range of motion. To the top, it goes as high as that. I'm not sure you're actually supposed to, to move it like this. Down-wise, down, not so much, but um, a fairly decent range of motion, particularly if you, I suppose, if you mount it this way. No, there would be no point, because then you'd just be rotating it, wouldn't you? But, uh, yeah, good range of motion on the camera. It's fairly nice to look at, isn't it? It's a, you know aesthetically quite pleasing. I don't normally go too much for this sort of glossy finish on plastics and yeah, I prefer my, my products to be matte. But uh, in this case, I think that's uh, it's actually quite a nice looking camera. As I mentioned before, the app is okay. It's a little bit mixed up at times. It doesn't, it's not massively coherent from one section to another and it doesn't always it's not always you don't always feel like it's done exactly what you wanted it to do but it does work and it yeah it allows you to see what's going on with the camera allows you to adjust the position of the camera so it does what it says uh, the IR LEDs on this, the infrared LEDs, uh, a lot of the time on these cameras you just get kind of, let's say this was an IR LED, it's not in this case, but let's say it was, you just get one placed there and it's quite an intense point of light and it also creates a, a really kind of hot spot when you're looking at the image. These are a lot, they have, these have a few, this camera has a few LEDs spread evenly across this area, there's like about, I don't know, maybe about eight or 10 of them or something, uh, which means that your night vision stuff is more evenly lit and that's the that's a positive here there is a downside to that which i'll get on to in a moment but um it's a fairly nice image uh, evenly lit around the camera okay let's move on to the cons let's move on to the bad points i wouldn't say that this is a good security device and there's a couple of reasons for that really uh, this is an absolutely fantastic way to monitor your home. If you want something where you want to monitor your, a cot or you want to monitor um, your pet, you know, pet cam, then this is a great device for that. No questions. 
I, the reason I say it's not a particularly good security device is because of, firstly, reliability. Um, there's been a number of times when I've gone onto the app and tried to get onto this and it's just not been online for some reason. Don't know why. Wireless in the house has been working fine. I'm not going to say categorically that my network wasn't to blame because I just don't know that 100%. However, I've still gone on and just not been, it just says devices offline. Then I've come back to it 12 hours later and it says devices online again, or I've just had to switch it off at the mains, turn it back on and it's come straight back online again. Why? I don't know, as I say, but it, if for a security device, reliability is absolutely key. It has to be working 24 seven. Otherwise, what's the point? I mean, if there's a chance of something happening when a device is offline, well, you know, it's not, it's just not good enough, is it? Secondly, uh, the, uh, the image quality at night isn't great. It's very, very grainy. And I don't think that it's going to be good enough to actually perform any kind of identification on somebody. Sure, you can see a time-wise when something happened potentially, which might be useful. But in my experience with CCTV and dealing with the police, if you can't ID someone, it's not really any use. So for a security device, it isn't ideal really. But as I say, for a pet cam, my home monitoring device, uh, baby cam, whatever you call it, is perfect. I couldn't get cloud storage to work. So I'm using the app on uh, an iPhone. I tried on an iPhone 8 and I tried on an iPhone 11 and I couldn't get the cloud storage to work at all. I went in to activate it and it didn't activate. Um, it just wouldn't, it just, you know, you go to buy some, I just wanted to buy some to try it and uh, it didn't work. I contacted them about that because I thought, well, that's a bit unfair of me to sort of talk about, talk about a product and, you know, I couldn't get stuff working. And they said, try it on an Android device. Well, I haven't got an Android device. Uh, no one enough, my household has an Android device. Uh, we have three, three phones in our, in our house and they're all iPhones, unfortunately. It's just the way it is. And um, while I could have pestered a friend of mine and sort of said, could you install this? Could you try putting it? I, I just figured, well, it's got to work on an iPhone, right? If you're going to sell this in the UK, particularly or in, in, in Europe, it's got to work on an iPhone. So I couldn't get it to work. However, I did remember I mentioned earlier that this software, the app that this uses is really similar to other cameras. I went into the app of another camera, added this device and got cloud storage working through there. Now, I don't know whether the cloud storage is provided by the same people or not, probably is, but, um, but I still got it working through there. And another reason, just going back to the security side of things, cloud storage on this camera can only be used by motion detection. You can't just record, like on the SD card, um, which you, where you can record 24 seven, the cloud storage is motion detected. And motion detection on this is not great. No matter what, I, I, I tried multiple different settings. You've got a little slider to say what's the sensitivity and what have you. If I put it to 100, wouldn't, I just wouldn't, it was never right. It was never spot on. So sometimes it would capture move, movement, sometimes it wouldn't. If you walk right up to it, if, you go, you know, if you're right up close to the camera, yeah, it'll capture the motion. But if someone's a little bit further away, it just didn't record it and just like left a massive section missing. Um, and wouldn't put it, put it, you know, wouldn't record it to the cloud storage at all, or indeed mark it as motion. I think some of that might have been to do with the fact that I was using a third-party app. Again, not too sure, but I didn't find motion detection on this camera to be particularly reliable. Okay, yeah. So the image quality at nighttime, not not amazing. And uh, yeah, I've already mentioned that point about um, it being p potentially a little bit unreliable and having, you know, it's gone offline for me a few times. But overall, you know, there are some quite sort of critical points there uh, that I've kind of kind of almost like taken this camera and said, ah, oh, don't bother, it's not great because of this, this and this. And yes, they are important, but it's still a decent camera. It's still a decent little security camera. Um, still a <laughs> decent little uh, pan tilt camera and um, if you want something like this for your home you could yeah for the money I think you could do much worse than this this is the anchor i41 EJ and I hope you think that's a fair review if you've got any questions please ask them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer but apart from that 
Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.